Hello and welcome back. Week 18 preview coming a day early because you'll all be watching the Super Bowl tomorrow. This is your weekly look at the schedule for next week, how to maximize your waiver ads, and uh, some goalie streamers as well as some trends and notes. And as always, let's jump right into the schedule. 52 games this week, 11 teams with four games. I'm not going to read those. You can see them at the top. Three teams play twice, Anaheim, Philly, Vegas, so you can drop some of your uh, questionable guys from any of these teams. If you were thinking about Aiden Hill because Thompson's out, maybe wait a week on that. Uh, they only play twice this week, so he's not going to get a ton of volume. Uh, there aren't any horribly light nights this week. The lightest is Monday and Friday with five, and then Wednesday and Sunday have six, but it's a pretty nice spread throughout the week. Um, the perfect Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday schedule is Minnesota. Now, they do have some difficult matchups here. Colorado, Dallas, Nashville, they're all top 10 defensive teams, and Minnesota isn't playing that well. So this is going to be a difficult week for them, and it will probably make or break their season, to be honest with you. They're struggling a lot lately, and they need these wins. And then this game against Florida, Florida's been picking it up lately. They're 6-2-2 two and two in their last 10, so they've been improving, and this 27th ranked defense is starting to come up as well. Now, Arizona has the second best schedule. They have three light nights, Monday, Wednesday, Sunday. There's a weekend back-to-back -back with some favorable matchups for some goals uh, against uh, at LA and then home against uh, Columbus. Worth noting, Arizona is 11-8-2 at Mullet Arena this year, and they average three goals per game at home. And then you compare that to 6-20-4 record on the road with 2.3 goals per game. So they're a much better home team, and you're going to get that exposure here uh, against Tampa Bay, and they need it because that's a very difficult matchup. And then on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, it's nice that they're home because they play much better at Mullet Arena. So that's uh, we'll get into a little bit more of that as we go on. Um, but the third best schedule is Ottawa. They have a back-to-back -to, -back to start with travel involved, at home against Calgary, and then on Long Island, and then two favorable matchups towards the end of the week. But let's get in to some of the waiver ads, and we'll start with Minnesota, who has the best schedule. Not a lot to go off of here. If Erickson X on your waiver wire, go grab him, but he's 74% owned. That's why I'm not featuring him here. He's got 11 points in his last 11 games, five goals, six assists, seven power play points. Uh, but again, he's 74% owned. Sam Steele is no longer relevant. Zero points in his last nine games and only nine shots over that span. And in his place on the top line is Ryan Hartman, which is why he's featured here. The numbers aren't great. He hasn't been hot. Nobody in Minnesota has been hot lately other than Erickson Eck and Zook and Kaprizov. Uh, but he is getting first line exposure with those two. And he had 34 goals on that line last year. So Hartman would be the first ad for me. Uh, if you're looking for a hits and blocks defenseman, Jake Middleton has been doing both of those things pretty well over the last month. 1.73 hits and blocks per game over the last month, which is why I'm featuring him here. And then in terms of uh, overall plays for Minnesota, Philip Gustafson, 46% owned, but he's been the better of the two goalies. Over the last two weeks, Flurry, three games, one win, 3.68 goals against, and an 8.89 save percentage. Gustafson, in that same span, two games, zero wins for some reason, 2.33 goals against, and a 9.32 save percentage. And then you look at over the last month, he's got a 9.21. So it's not just a small sample size. He's been very good all season long. He's one of the top 10 or 15 rated goalies on the Data Draft Goalie Hub, which you can access in the Patreon link in the description below. Uh, but Minnesota has four games this upcoming week and then four games in week 19, including a back-to-back -back against Columbus and Toronto. So he hasn't been getting a lot of starts lately, but he will start to get those starts going forward. And that would be a perfect time to pick up Philip Gustafson if he's available on your wire. Now, as we turn to the Coyotes, uh, the number one ad for me is going to be Nick Schmaltz. You're getting top line exposure with Clayton Keller, nine points in his last 11 games, two on the power play, an even spread, four goals, five assists. Uh, and this is a dual position eligible player. Uh, I have him in my faceoff league because he does cover center and right wing and his production is pretty good, all things considered. Again, you're getting that top line exposure uh, and Arizona has been scoring a lot more at home and they do have two home games next week. So that does uh, bode well for Schmaltz. Now, if you're in a deeper league, Remember Matthias Michelli. At the beginning of the year, I was featuring him quite a bit. 2% owned, single position left winger, 23 points in 33 games. Uh, one of the hotter rookies on the season, although he did miss time, and obviously Beneers is the, the front runner for the Calder Trophy. Um, Michelli is assist heavy and power play point heavy. So eight power play points in those 33 games. He does have a power play goal and a game winning goal. Uh, 
Um, but mainly you're going to own him for his power play exposure uh, and the assist coverage that he gets. Um, again, 23 points. I believe 20 of those are assists. So that's what you're getting out of Michelli. But he is relatively productive and he's pretty skilled as well. And nobody seems to be talking about him now as they were earlier in the season when he was healthy. Last but not least, Barrett Hayton, 5%. He's a single position center. He's probably the hottest uh, Arizona Coyote lately. Two goals, two assists, three power play points, 15 shots in his last four games. Um, he's a young player, so he's very inconsistent. But when he's hot, you could ride that hot streak. The only question I have is how hot is he with uh, some of these games coming at before the All-Star break, some of them after. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, if he can continue this streak. But if you need that uh, center exposure uh, and you don't have uh, uh, access to Schmaltz, this would be the guy to pick up, Barrett Hayton. Again, you could probably also go to Lawson Krause. You could probably go to Nick Ritchie. They both get power play time. They get some peripherals and some goal coverage as well. Uh, and if you want access to any of their player hubs, again, the link is in the Patreon, the Patreon link in the description below, and you can access all of the updated player and goaltending hubs. Now, we turn to Ottawa, and there's something I wanted to mention. Now, in the, the uh, team value video that I recently did about a week ago, uh, I mentioned that Ottawa has five players. They were the most in the league, above 90 on the Data Draft Player Hub without hits and blocks. So they've got five elite offensive guys in their top six. Whoever else is in their top six is who you're going to want access to because you're getting access to five elite offensive players. Normally, that's Josh Norris. He's done for the year. Before the break, it was Ridley Gregg, 2% owned center, uh, two assists, two power play points, 11 shots in four games. Uh, if he gets that second line center uh, role, then this is the guy to pick up. But Matthew Joseph also saw some time uh, in the top six, and that was productive for him. One goal, two assists, a power play point in his last three games, 1% owned and dual position eligible. So he's a little bit more valuable. Um, but if Ridley Gregg is going to be the second line center, I do like that play. He's a 63 on the data draft player hub with hits and blocks, uh, which is pretty good for a guy who's, uh, you know, I don't think he's a rookie, but he's a young player nonetheless. Now, the only other player that you would maybe want access to is Jake Sanderson, 30% owned, four assists, three on the power play in his last four games. I mentioned him earlier in the year with Shabbat out. He was quarterback in that power play. Shabbat comes back. He continues that production. So that's encouraging to see. And this is the second time I've mentioned him after Shabbat's come back that he's kept his production up. So he is a pretty consistent waiver option if he's available for you. And then last but not least, Anton Forsberg, 45% owned. Uh, three wins in his last three games, 2.0 goals against, 935 save percentage, and a shutout. But I'll come back to him later when we cover the goaltender streamers for Week 18. But that's going to do it for Ottawa. Let's look at the other teams that have four games, and there's a lot of them. So we're going to split this into defense and forwards. For the defensemen, uh, with Kale McCarr being injured, potential concussion, we don't know how long he's going to be out. Uh, and that creates some options on the blue line for Colorado. Now it's Gerard, Byram, and Taves. All three got power play time with Makar out. Taves was power play one. The other two were both on power play two together. So look at the ownership percentages. Taves is in the 70s. Byram is 55% despite missing a lot of time. Gerard only 18%. He's the value option. Seven points in his last 11 games, two on the power play, and 21 blocks. So he's getting some blocks coverage for you as well as some offensive production. If you have both available, I'd prefer Byram. He's a little bit more dynamic offensively. As you can see, he's the highest rated of this bunch. He does get you blocks. He does get you hits. He gets a little bit of power play exposure and the assists are there. Um, again, this is a small sample size and he's a very talented player. Uh, in a small stretch last year, he was very, very good. Um, and this could potentially be the perfect time to scoop him up before his ownership climbs if Makar is out for an extended period of time. Now, moving down the list, Adam Boquist, I've mentioned him a number of times on the channel. I'm still waiting for the goal production, but the assists are there. Now, he did play last night, so this isn't necessarily updated. Uh, I made this before the games last night, but seven assists, two power play points in his last 10 games, 6% uh, owned. And this is why I'm mentioning him. If you're getting a, a power play quarterback defenseman at 6% ownership, you have to open your eyes to that because that's very rare. So uh, not necessarily the best power play in the league, but you're getting a power play quarterback defenseman uh, who's typically a goal scoring option and he just hasn't been getting the goals lately. 
Now, Ben Sherratt, he's been better since they mixed uh, up the defensive pairings um, in terms of his uh, hits and blocks coverage. He's a hits and blocks D. Two hits per game, 2.64 blocks per game over the last month. Uh, he's a 53 on the hub, so not the most complete defenseman. But if you need a hits and blocks guy, he is definitely an option, 7% owned. If you just want hits, Jeremy Lausanne, 4.7 hits per game over the last month. Um, that's incredible. So that's got to be number one or number two in the league over that span. Uh, 7% ownership. So you're, you know, if he's available on your wire and you're in a bangers league, go pick him up right now. They have a four game week this week. So everything's lined up for you to rack up the hits this week with Jeremy Lazan. If you're in a league with plus minus, Ryan Graves is one of the best in the league for plus minus 15% owned. He gets shots, hits and blocks, 2.5 shots, 1.2 hits and 2.5 blocks per game over the last month. Uh, and again, John Marino's back. He plays with Graves often. So those guys are an excellent shutdown pair. Uh, they're both going to increase the value of Devils goaltenders. So that's something we'll come back to in just a minute. But let's turn to the forward options. Now we got three deep league plays and three normal plays. So for the deep league plays, you're looking at Chicago Blackhawks. Nobody wants to own them. Taylor Radish has actually been playing pretty well. 2% owned, dual eligible, nine points three on the power play in his last 10 games. You have Jason Dickinson. He's been playing well as well, mainly because of the top line exposure you're getting to Patrick Kane. He's top line center right now. He's a dual position center left wing, three points in his last three games. So those are two Blackhawks you could potentially go for. Uh, you can see 63 and a 61 on the player hub. Not bad, uh, especially for deep leagues. Now you look at Alex Newhook. He's 3% owned for Colorado. Center left wing, five goals. In his last 10 games, that's the main reason to pick him up. Uh, eye test, he looks like he's flying. Um, so these three guys are excellent deep league options, but let's get to the good stuff. Anton Lundell, 24% owned. Um, and this is in especially interesting because of Barkov. So with Barkov out, he is bumped up to one of the top six center positions. So that helps his uh, ownership as well. But if Barkov's back... When they put Lundell on the wing with Barkoff, that actually bumped his production as well. So three goals, five assists, eight points, two on the power play, 29 shots in his last 12 games. Uh, so, and on top of all of that, again, as I mentioned before, the Panthers 6-2-2 two two in their last 10. They're averaging 4.5 goals for per game. And he's the only guy you can really access from their top six, even maybe their top nine. Luz Dorinan might be there for you, but Lundell is probably the better add. Uh, so he's the way I would go if you're trying to get access to this uh, heating up Florida Panthers team. Now, for a hits forward, Tanner Janot, the hits are always there, averaging four per game over his last seven. He's usually between 3.5 and four hits per game on the season. Uh, but the offense has started to come. Two goals, two assists in his last seven games, which is encouraging because Nashville desperately needs goal production. And he provided it for him last year where he had, where he had 24 goals. On the season so they need him to score and he's starting to do that uh, so he's 31 percent on which is a little bit high considering his lack of scoring but he is a hits specialty tool and he is one of the best at it but the best ad of the entire week is andre palat 27 percent owned left winger only which does hurt his value a little bit three goals six assists nine points 20 hits in his last 10 games and when you look at his hub 87th percentile in hits and 79th in blocks. You wouldn't expect that from a forward. This looks like more of a defenseman's file, but nonetheless, he's been getting it done in those two categories. And then the goal production, uh, 88th percentile in goals. Again, limited sample size because he's been out for a while, but he is relatively productive when he's out there. I would expect the shots to come up. Uh, it is worth noting that uh, Jack Hughes is out, which may affect Palat, uh, but it may also give him some more ice time. So, um, one other thing I wanted to add about Palat, he increased 18 points on the data draft player hub. So he has been rocketing up the list uh, after returning from injury. So that's something to monitor. People are still treating him like he's injured at 27%. You're probably going to want access to the Devils top six. They're still a really good team. So Palat is the way you can do that. And this is a nice week to pick him up in a four game week. Now, as we turn to the goalie streamers, I've never heard of this guy, uh, but apparently he's not that bad. Jackson Stauber, 2% owned, three games, three wins, 2.29 goals against, 925 save percentage. Uh, Chicago does have a uh, back-to-back. Uh, if he starts at Montreal Tuesday, that's a good pickup. If he starts against Toronto, 
the next day, then that's probably not the best second night of a back-to-back against a powerhouse team. Um, And then ideally, you'd like him to start Tuesday at Montreal and Friday at Ottawa. So if he gets that Montreal start, then maybe hold on to him for the rest of the week. If not, then I probably wouldn't own him this week, but it is something to keep an eye on. I mentioned Mrazek in one of the uh, top performer videos in the last couple weeks. Uh, so between the two of them, they've been getting some decent goaltending in Chicago. So that's something to monitor, although you're getting horrendous team exposure with that defense. Now, the one of the best uh, waiver ads that you're going to have this week is Franco's. The Colorado Avalanche have two back-to-backs, Tampa home Tuesday, then at Minnesota Wednesday. Then they're at St. Louis Saturday and home against Edmonton Sunday. So both back-to-backs involve travel, and it'll be interesting to see who gets what start. But Franco's is going to start two games, and he's the highest-rated goaltender of this bunch. He's a 56 on the Data Draft Goalie Hub. Uh, so he's the best of this bunch, and he's getting two games this week. So that would be the guy to pick up for me. Uh, 42% owned. If he's available for you, I would go grab him. If he's not available... Mackenzie Blackwood is starting to play really well, and the key to this is John Marino is back. Marino is the secret ingredient for the Devils. Uh, Marino and Graves are both excellent shutdown defensemen, and they're both healthy now. So now is the time. I mentioned before, a couple weeks ago, Blackwood was coming back from injury. I said, I'm going to wait until John Marino comes back, and then maybe I'll take a look at him. Well, now he's back, so I'm taking a look at him. I haven't picked him up yet, uh, but a four-game week, he'll probably get... Uh, One of the starts because they do have a back-to-back on the weekend, Saturday at Pittsburgh, Sunday home against Winnipeg. Uh, He could get two starts, but he's going to get at least one. So that's something that I'll be monitoring this week. Another thing that I haven't mentioned a lot is Yaro Halak. He's been on fire lately. So have the Rangers. The Rangers are the fourth best defensive team in the NHL in terms of goals against per game, and Halak benefits from that. So Rangers are on the Western Canada trip. They have three games next week. Um, but they do have a Friday, Saturday back-to-back in Edmonton and Calgary, so Halak will get one of those games, which will help you if he starts the Friday game, especially as your lineup will probably be full on Saturday. But three games, three wins, two four seven goals against, and a nine eighteen save percentage last month. So he was a little shaky to start with, but now he's found his game, and he's been playing excellent. And then last but not least, we talked about Anton Forsberg before. Uh, he his numbers don't look that great. Three three seven goals against, eight ninety four save percentage. That's because he throws a couple stinker, stinkers in there, uh, and they don't have the best team defense. So that's why I haven't been going towards him. But he is an excellent goaltender with uh, high goals uh, saved above expected. So this is an opportunity to pick him up where they have uh, a decent week. They have a back to back Monday Tuesday home versus Calgary, then on the road against the Islanders. They also play Chicago and St Louis later in the week. Both winnable games, so if Forsberg starts one of those two at the end of the week, you're getting two starts out of Forsberg, and this would be one of the good weeks to pick him up uh, if you need a starting goaltender, and some of you might because there have been some injuries to guys like Thompson and whatnot, Uh, so he's an excellent option. For me, the best option this week is Franco's, but all of these guys, except for Stauber, I haven't really heard of him prior to this week, but all of these other guys uh, are pretty solid options. These two get you good team exposure. Franco's is the best of the bunch, and Forsberg is probably the most talented of this bunch. But nonetheless, this, these are the goalie streams for this week. That's going to do it for this video. If you watched till the end, I want to thank you for doing so. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll be answering comments and questions for the rest of the day. Uh, we've got a busy schedule on this Saturday. Uh, And then we've got uh, a couple of games tomorrow and then the Super Bowl. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. And I will see you on Monday for the top performers video.